Hey everyone, Ryan Young, Kama Jiu Jitsu. Hope you're doing well. So I thought I'd do something a little bit different today because uh, years ago when we lived back in our in our other home, I did some videos on making juice. And actually last week or the week, week prior, someone had mentioned watching that video on me making juice, the old Gracie diet style juice and also uh, opening a coconut, which was actually pretty fun. But uh, anyway, I thought I'd do something different today. And being that a lot of you know that I'm, I, I eat mostly meat now, um, I do cheat all the time. You know, I had ice cream yesterday. But for the most part, I, I, I fast and I don't eat until middle of the day. So right now it's about 11.30 in the morning. I haven't had anything for maybe 13 hours. The last time I ate was probably about 10 p.m. or maybe even before that last night. And I taught a class this morning, now I'm back. Uh, took a shower, took a nap, and thought, I, okay, let's get some, some food ready. So right now, today I'm gonna eat lamb chops. So these uh, I just simply get from Costco. So this is about three and a half pounds, or three pounds worth, and I usually try to eat about a pound of meat in a sitting because that's usually where I get full and I can't eat anymore. I have tried buying like one and a half pound steaks over Costco and I end up just uh, uh, putting aside about a third of it. So uh, these are lamb chops and they're, um, it's 3.14 pounds, so I eat half of this. So I eat this half right here is what I'm gonna eat today. And uh, see, it's 20, almost $22, which means that's gonna be $11. And some people might think, well, you know, Ryan, I'd like to eat meat and stuff, but it's so expensive, which it is, but anything good is not gonna be cheap, number one. Number two is, if I go out to eat a fast food place like Muya, which, uh, which is a burger place, and I get a double, double cheeseburger, whatever it is, uh, you know, and get it what they call ice burger style, and it's gonna cost me with a drink, about $11, $12, maybe even more. I can't remember, I think the burger itself might be $9 alone. So when I really think about it, if I eat like this, I'm actually eating better because now I can cook it, I can do what I want, and I can, I can get it to taste the way I want. And one thing that I found is when it comes to cooking meat, I do it so much that I actually figure out or figured out that I kind of like the way I cook it better than when I go to a lot of nice restaurants and spend 50, 60, $70 for uh, a prime ribeye which tastes great, but is it that much better than a $10 steak or a $12 steak, which is $12 a pound for a buy? Mm, probably not. You know, you just go out for the atmosphere. Whereas a lot of times before I'd go out because the food was actually better. You don't need to do that. You can actually do it yourself. So first thing you wanna do is you wanna get your pan hot. I can do this outside of the grill, but it's really cold out. Um, it's gonna snow tonight, in fact, or so they say. Uh, snow or sleep, either one, really cold. Um, and I have my cast iron pan. It's just easier for me to just heat it up here. Um, I use gas, but you know, really just use whatever, you, whatever you've got. First thing I wanna do is I wanna get the pan hot. In the meantime, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna, I'm gonna season my steak, or my lamb chop in this case. I had steak yesterday, so they had a, and what I do is I, I try to buy the meat on sale if I can. So Costco last week, they had a big sale on uh, prime, actually, no, last week was choice. So you get a five pound packet of ribeyes that they had down to like 10 50 a pound. And what you do is you buy the pack and they give you $10 off the entire pack. So it ended up being a lot less, like $8, $9 a pound. So, but this time it's a uh, lamb chops. Lamb runs around $6.99 a pound. And um, some of you don't like lamb, which is fine. Um, I grew up with this. My mom would always make it for me. Now, here's the simple secret to cooking meat. Laurie's garlic salt, really. And then I have the big one because I'll get it from Costco because this is probably a couple of weeks old already. So we use a lot of this. Don't be afraid of salt. Salt is uh, all that, you know, research has been turning out that um, what we learned in, as children about salt being bad is not really bad. And besides, it makes your food taste really good. Um, I just go and shake it on. And when the meat is relatively thick like this is, um, be generous with it. And then what I do is I salt all sides, all sides. Easy way to do it is just right here. As you can see, I'm left-handed. For some reason people notice that, but my jujitsu is right-handed, uh -huh. good job. And then yes, I do like to salt the bone side because I'm gonna cook in that as well. All right, so I've done every side, but what's soon to be the top side. 
So right now this is on high. And the reason why is because I want to create a sear in my meat. Now this, this came just out of, out of the refrigerator. I'm always cooking with meat just out of the refrigerator. So now uh, a lot of people say you need to leave it out to get down to room temperature before you cook it. And that is true to an extent. However, when I do it, I tend to overdo my meat. And the worst, the only thing worse than oversalting is overdoing. Well, no, actually overdoing is not as bad as oversalting. Oversalting, you can't eat it. Overdoing it, you can still eat it. But you just, it's better to undercook your meat because you can always put it back on. If you overcook it, then it's, it's done. Well done. So that's the side I didn't salt. So. Getting some on the garlic salt. Now let it sit. And some of you like your meat well done, medium well, rare, whatever. And I like my medium rare. It doesn't matter if it's steak or it's beef. I eat both medium rare. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to check for a sear. It could happen quickly. Not quite. Wait another 10, 15 seconds. So. There's a, a few schools of thought. Oh, by the way, I'm cooking the meat in a combination of tallow, which is beef fat, and bacon fat. Um, I don't use, I, I will use butter as a starter. So let's say it's a brand new dry pan. If I have no tallow or pork fat, um, which is also called lard, to put in the pan, I'll use butter. And I use a lot of it. Uh, don't use a little, use a lot. And um, in fact, what I have in here is probably equal to about a half a stick of butter as far as volume because you know what I don't want my pan to be dry I want it to be more moist so you see this uh, sear that's right here you know it's uh, yeah that's, that's kind of like how you want it so now what I'll do is I'll set it on the side and I do that for all the pieces so I'm going to be cooking every single side including the bone side and I'll rotate it around that way, I'm not leaving it too long on one side versus another side. Um, they're all getting done to equal doneness, although the, the flat parts get a little bit more time than do the sides. And I'm just looking to create that sear on this side too. Sometimes when you have a ribeye or a New York steak, New York steak has what we call a fat cap on it. You want it to sit on that fat cap for a while and let the fat cap burn. Uh, by the way, this is, this is Grace right here. She always comes around when I'm frying something and she's licking the floor because she's because she likes to eat the stuff too. So uh, by the way, she's what's called a white English. A white English bulldog. Not a white English bulldog. She's a white English bulldog. They're they were typically from the south. Deep south, meaning Mississippi, Alabama, Georgia, North Florida. That's where you typically get them. They use them as farm dogs and they would be around to guard the farm. I mean, that was their job. Sometimes they'd be used to um, to catch to catch livestock or catch wild boar. Um, they use them as catch dogs. Um, they use them just as regular guard dogs. So what I'm doing now is I'm flipping it to the other side, and you can see now how we got the car on that one side. Now I'm going to do that for the other side. But sometimes you gotta kinda lay it out now. Also watch out this uh, the oil can pop. And when you've done it as much as many times as I have, but you kinda get used to it, it's not a big deal. And I might have burn on my arms and you know for me it's just a cost of getting to you what I want to eat. But when I worked at Jack in the Box as a kid, I'd get burned all the time and I hated it. Which explains why I worked there a total of a month and a half. But anyway, for you kids, get a job, you get a new fast food. So the reason why, and you've seen some other videos, I've made a, a, a transformation in my diet. I, I started to eat more meat, and I don't eat fruit anymore, except once in a great while. Um, I'm gonna be putting in the bone now in the set. Uh, another couple of seconds. I don't eat fruit much anymore now, only because, uh, as mentioned in one of my other videos, I was uh, found to be pre-diabetic. Um, 
or was I borderline pre-diabetic? I can't remember what it was. Uh, my A1C was at like six. So if that's pre-diabetic, that's what I was. So I ended up having to change my diet, taking fewer sugar, and started to eat more meat. One of my students um, started doing keto, and he lost a ton of weight from it. He said all his, all his blood numbers were all good. So I thought, okay, I'll try it. Now it's getting a little high, so I'm gonna turn it down a little bit. So the one thing about cast iron is it, it takes in a lot of the heat and it holds it pretty well. So as the pan kind of gets, it takes a little while for the pan to heat up versus aluminum. By the way, don't cook in aluminum. Uh, aluminum kind of leach into your food, which is not what you want. Uh, you want to really cook with uh, cast iron. That's really the best thing to cook with. Um, or stainless steel, just not aluminum. What I'm gonna do now is I'll go ahead and set it on the side that's still raw. And it's not on high anymore, but you can still hear it sizzling because the pan has residual heat in it. So I've taken it down, uh, so it's high for me is about a seven, um, six, seven. I take it down to about a four. Um, what that does, it allows the pan to cool down a bit. We already got the sear on all the edges, and now I want the heat to kind of radiate into the meat to kind of cook it further up. If you leave it on high for, for too long, you'll actually end up burning your meat, and that's not good either. You know, there's a difference between getting a char and burning it, uh, because you, know, you kind of want that little crust on there, but you don't want it to, to burn like you black, where it's black, where smoke starts emanating from your food. So when I turn it down, what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I'm going to turn it a few more times. And that's another thing too. A lot of people, there's two schools of thought on cooking meat about you turn once and done, right? I believe in cooking on the sides and I also turn. And what I found is that either way works. I've, I've had it both ways. It's just for me, I don't want a chance burning anything. So I turn a lot. Um, like I said, I just want my, uh, I just want my scorch, uh, my, uh, my crust and then that. So now you'll see that there's some light spots that are on the meat, which is where it wasn't laying on. So I'll just go ahead and just set it on it for a second here. Just to let it go. Uh, a few of the pieces have that, and one of them doesn't. So, so once I finish putting it here, I'll just go ahead and put it on the side again. We'll do another round on the side. This one, still not quite cooked on that one side. These aren't bad. Yep, so I'll set this on the side. And I'll set this on the side. So I'll do one more round. Um, so I've got this side, got the other side, do the bold side. And they'll be almost done at that point. Lamb cooks pretty quick. It, cooks, it seems to cook a little faster than beef in my experience. Not sure why. Maybe it's the fat content, um, and it's smaller, but it has a bone in it. So they say bones kind of make things take a little longer too. I don't know. Um, I don't. I don't have this down to a science. I just kind of know basically when it's done. Just pull it off to the side, and just kind of just cut through one like this, and you'll see that it's still rare. Okay. So the meat's not done yet. Although it looks done. Okay, now I set it back down on the side. And being that my heat's a little lower, I'll just let it sit a little bit. And I want the, the heat to go past the surface and into the meat a little bit. So now I'll put it on the other side. And they'll probably be done right after this. So one thing also good about lamb is that this uh, this is imported from Australia. I guess I used to I've seen it I've seen it uh, imported from Australia and New Zealand. I'm not sure on how the differences between New Zealand and Australia are, but I know that at least for New Zealand lamb, uh, they you can't they can't feed them any kind of hormones or anything like that. Uh, they're pretty much grass fed if I, if I remember right. Australia, like I said, I'm not sure. But generally, when you go to Costco and buy meat, you're generally going to get good stuff. You kind of feel too, these aren't quite done. So, I 
like I mentioned earlier, just, just keep turning them. Don't go and turn the heat up. If you turn the heat up, you'll burn it. And they are pretty thick, right? If you look at this, this is probably an inch thick. This particular cut here is the equivalent of a T-bone on a lamb chop. And the T-bone has two parts. It has the lean side, and, well, it has the fillet side, and I can't remember what the other side is. Um, but yeah, this is basically it. So you'll cut one side, the small side, and it's a really soft, tender piece. The other side is less so, but it's still just as good. Um, about another 30 seconds, and then this will be done. You know, if you like these kind of videos, just let me know. Um, I'd be happy to do a video of me cooking a New York steak, cooking a, cooking a ribeye. Um, but really, just if you haven't done so already, and if you're looking to lose weight, what we found is that, at least at our studio, uh, go on a heavy meat diet. It's actually, you know, all those, all those things that we've heard about growing up about how that's bad for you, it doesn't seem to be the case. I, I'm not gonna say that it isn't the case, I just said it doesn't seem to be the case. The members that we've had that have gone carnivore have just peeled weight off. And we're talking a lot of weight without actually dieting. When I say a lot of weight, I mean 20, 20 pounds in the first month. And these are people that are shocked by it. They, they didn't know what happened, it just kind of happened. Um, even, even Master Dave, um, He's been kind of playing with his diet for a while, you know, him being, you know, older, mid fifties, wanting to try to eat better. And there'd be times when I'm out with him and he's eating a vegetarian meat. Like, did that for a while, didn't help him. Then he was doing like a pescatarian type diet, didn't help him all that much. And then the last time he came about two or three weeks ago, when he, when he and I were in Austin, um, meeting our students there, he was just eating a carnivore diet. And he said, he'd been doing that for the last maybe month. And I think he lost about 15 pounds. Went from 205 down to 190. He said he felt really good. So consider doing it. And, and you know, the thing, the thing I always tell people is this, just do it for 30 days. If after 30 days, you don't feel better, then don't do it. But if after 30 days you feel better, do it for another 30 days. And just see what happens from there. And if your results are like, like everybody else's results, then you'd make some significant gains in weight loss. You'll feel really good. Uh, really the rule is to eat uh, ruminant, um, animals that eat grass, basically what it is. And you'll be, you might be shocked. You might be pleasantly shocked at what happens. So anyway, that's all I got for you. Take care. Happy trading. Bye now.